Hi everyone. If you saw my original Mac vs PC video, specifically for audio producers, it's time for an update. It's well into 2017 now, and Apple announced the MacBook abomination with USB-C only, and there's no sign of a new Mac Pro still, and definitely no sign that the Mac Pro Tower is ever coming back. So, no Mac Pro Tower since 2012, and that was made with Nailem and Westmere chips. These were the first generation equivalents of the original i5 and i7. Something you have to be clear on here is that Intel have been using the i3, 5 and 7 names for years now, updating along the way to the point where the newest ones are many times more powerful than the originals, and yet they still tend to use the same names. So we're now on the seventh generation. They put a seven in front of the part numbers for all the KB Lake processors, which is the most recent version. None of the original i7 CPU chipsets that Apple were using in these cheese grater towers had support for Thunderbolt, as it was brand new tech at the time, and it was only found on the 2011 Mac Pro at that point. It's taken this long for Thunderbolt to be commonplace anyway. The 2013 Mac Pro was a huge misstep for Apple. The form factor might have seemed like a good idea at the time, but for actual professionals, we often don't just need raw performance. We need modularity. That's why the older Mac Pro worked so well. You could put a ton of hard drives in it, several graphics cards, you know, three Pro Tools HD cards, the big things, tons of RAM slots in there, and it was all replaceable parts. Yeah, you could add everything to the back of the trash can Mac, but it becomes a mess of wires. Separate devices need separate power bricks with wall watts and all that kind of mess, and it can become a rat's nest of expensive tech quickly. Not to mention that Thunderbolt devices are more expensive, and that's because Intel have put a license cost on every Thunderbolt device, which jacks the price up. An internal hard drive might cost you, I don't know, 100 pounds, but the same thing in Thunderbolt would cost you 140 or more just because of the Thunderbolt interface. And if you want to set them up in a RAID array at some sort of affordable level, forget it. And it was all in one box. It was a heavy box, but a single one nonetheless. You could plug in a screen, keyboard and mouse and have a full Pro Tools rig ready to go. And you just plug in your HD cards, click, 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 you're off. Apple seems to have lost sight of the needs of professionals and have taken aim at aspirationals. My point is only made worse by the latest MacBook Pro. It's an absolute joke of a laptop. It has four USB-C ports, a standard that's not widely available yet, and a headphone port. That's it, which is more than can be said of the iPhone 7, which I, I have, by the way. It, it, it's, uh, it, they're okay. It looks like a nice machine, the laptop, but the Pro tag is misleading. It's designed to be thin, not fast, and as a result, it gets very hot when it's doing any kind of heavy workload and in turn it thermal throttles which means it's too hot so it actually slows down. Imagine your mix starting to struggle and pop and click just because you can't keep your computer cool. That's hardly what I would call pro. The website Pro Tools Expert have polled their users and over 50% of them in this poll said that they're planning to move away from Apple. Truth is, they were fantastic at making audio machines, but that's the thing, they were. I, I remained as bipartisan as I possibly could in the biggest Mac vs PC video that we've done, but the tide is turning. I am no more pro PC than I was when we first made that video, but I am less pro Mac, simply because they're leaving us behind. It's no secret that Apple sell far more phones now than computers. In fact, I think the figures were over 70% of their revenues from mobile now. So it makes sense to pull their best engineers off the projects and put them into making better iPads and iPhones. But how much work would it actually take to get a KB Lake i7, which already exists, stick it in one of the old Mac Pro Tower cases and put the latest Mac OS on there? People would bite your hand off for almost any amount of money. As for PC, my advice remains the same as always. If you know what you're doing, picking quality components, that's the best option for you, unless you specifically need to run Logic Pro. If you know the difference between a stable setup and cheap crap, you may as well do it yourself. That's something Apple always had going for them in the computer stakes. They usually picked 
good components and stable designs and made good drivers for those set components, where PCs were the Wild West. You could get both good and bad. So where maybe Apple computers were 95% stable, but on average PCs were 50-50, People don't understand that a PC is not a thing, it's an abstract concept, and a well-made one will be as good or better than an Apple device, but a crap one will always be a crap one. And if you don't know the difference, it will tarnish the reputation of the good ones. This is why traditionally Macs get a reputation for being solid, despite the fact that any regular studio engineer will tell you that they crash all the time. Partly because, like we said before, they're five years old or more, and have probably had more OS and software upgrades than is necessary or safe or healthy. I hope this has given you some insight into the state of play for audio engineers at the moment. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more tech news, guitar reviews and tutorials, and have a look at our Patreon campaign because everything we do is supported by you. So thanks for watching, I'm Adam Steele for the Hot Pole Studios and I'll see you in the next video.